Hey everybody, welcome to our C3 Church Global Podcast. This week we have John Pierce with us. Pastor Phil, great yeah, to be great here. To see you. And the effervescent, everlasting <laughs> Mark Kelsey. The revelator. Pastor Phil. The revelator. The revelator. <laughs> These are two of my finest friends and uh, and apologies to everybody else, <laughs> amen. But it is great to uh, be talking with two of the greatest men of God and our whole movement who have got so many accomplishments in their life. And uh, I want to actually talk through some of those areas as to how they affect us as a whole movement. And we have a, have a culture of growth, expansion, and enlargement, right. which is an outcome of being connect-driven, spirit-powered, and Christ-centered. That's their enduring values of what C3 is all about. And then we have a range of different qualities that make up our uh, culture, as it were, which I believe that if we nourish the roots of that culture, the fruit of that, the outcome of that will be, as I anticipated and we all do together in our leadership group in C3 Global, to see at least a million worshippers. Come on. Right. Every, every weekend gathering in magnificent, Christ-centered, spirit-powered congregations and bringing their friends to discover Jesus and making the kingdom of God a process of discipling the world around them. And so this is Love that. part of our entire uh, goal and aim. And, uh, and of course, these guys are integral to that happening. Mark Kelsey We've known each other like, what, 42 <clears throat> years? 40, hang on, 43 years. Yeah, 43 years. Yeah. And you don't look a day yeah, over yeah. 15. Since, we, you were we, ta- <laughs> since you were 10, right? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, <laughs> we met at five. Anyway. <laughs> and, uh, and so Express has become a key component for leadership development. In other places, it's called growth track or various things. But this is a pretty compressed, intense experience yep. of leadership development. Yep. Talk about it. Yeah, I mean, when we first came back from New York, uh, you said uh, start a church planning school because that was the focus. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna, trying to do that more intentionally. Mm-hmm. So we did, uh, we, and we came up with the name, International School of the Church. <laughs> and we did a day a week for a year. Right. But after the first year or two, we realised, oh, hang on, people can't get access to it. Right. right. Because they've got to either live within driving distance of Sydney, mm-hmm. right? So we thought, all right, how, how else can we do this? So let's do a five day intensive, right? Uh, and then that developed into this thing where, okay, well, if it's going to be an intensive, let's do something different. Mm, so right. we thought, let's make it holistic, yes, immersive, mm-hmm. experiential, and transformational. Love that. So, so, so the one of the unique things is the physical element. Yeah. In the holistic. The holistic approach. Yes. So, Talk about that. So uh, we figured, all right, if it's holistic, then we need to really focus on the whole person. Mm-hmm. So if we build a whole person and make them healthy or help mm-hmm. them become healthy mm-hmm. uh, spiritually, uh, physically, and uh, emotionally. Mm-hmm. So uh, on the first day, uh, it's you and your personal world. So each day has a different theme. Mm-hmm. The first day is you and your personal world. So we mm-hmm. cover emotional health, physical health, uh, spiritual health, family health, mm-hmm. marriage. Um, John does a great session on personal financial health straight out of your book, which Uh is brilliant. Uh Uh, And we just sort of realised if ministers don't make it long-term, because it's really Mm -hmm. about the long-term health, because if, like you said earlier, if if the values are embedded deep in them, in our movement, but individually in our leaders, then eventually they're going going to become fruitful. Right. So if we can help leaders, uh, male and female, you know, last the distance. Right have good marriages, families, et cetera, then they're going to eventually bear fruit. So let's put the seed of that into them. In, uh, oh, totally. Now, it's just five-day intensive, so you can only achieve so much, but hopefully the hopefully the patterns mm-hmm. of ongoing lifestyle. So far this them. year, we've yeah. done one in Indonesia. Yep. Uh, Fiji. Fiji. Uh, Europe. Europe. Uh, America. We're just about to go to the US. Yeah. And then South Africa and then East and West Africa. God. That's Amazing. Six yeah. this year, right? Six this year. And, and yeah. then similar plans for next year. Similar plans. A couple of new regions next year. Uh, we're going to South America for the first time, mm-hmm. for Express that is. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and South, and India, South okay. Asia. So as I understand it and have been in amongst it, 
like 90% of the people would be under 30? Yeah, yeah. So this is the training of next generation church leaders. It is. It's really, it's really working with our amazing regional directors right. to help identify who's that next yes. t- yeah, yeah. tier the crew. of leaders that are in churches. They're there. Right. right. But as soon as you gather them or, or help the leaders choose them, and then they get together. It's, it's, it's a just, I don't know what it does. It just pops them to the surface. Totally. It's a phenomenon. And they create these amazing Life connections friendships. with each other. It's true. Exactly. So uh, I, I did it in 2001. Okay. Right. So I was, Danielle and I were senior pastors for original, one year. The original. So in the was original, that the first? Yeah, it was the first. So, yeah. so we did it. And I would say I still reference things that we touched on or yeah. covered in Amazing. that express. So like, like Mark's a genius. He's, a, he's an architect yeah. of this. Put it together brilliantly. So it does cover day one is you the person, day two, the ch- talk us the through. Ch- the church builder. You the church builder. You the, And then you the leader. Yes. You the minister. Yes. And then what's next? What's next? So so like for example, I remember Pastor Phil, you came in and you did sessions on yeah. raising money, on vision casting, uh, we had people talk about strategy. We did this analysis for Danielle and I of our personality mm-hmm. and what would be the kind of people we'd need to strengthen our team with. It was so good health. So, you know, it was a, a wake up. Most people have learnt now to get fit before they go to Express. <laughs> There's enough of a culture. But yeah. but that culture for C3 of, hey, we're, we're a fit crew. We, we want to get yeah. fit. We want to, yeah. we, we pay attention to that part of our lives and Express has definitely embedded that globally. So, so for me, just a powerful experience. I met people from from all around the world, senior pastors, a very, very in, a formative, transformative yeah. journey for us. Yeah. So, so good. well done. And and the fact that we're going to all these different nations <laughs> yes. yep. now instills a culture. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing. Culture's not a handbook. No. You no. can't read it. It's people. No, it's people. So people are looking at you, Mr. Kelsey. Yes. yes. And uh, there it is. This and they're is looking at John yeah. Pierce and they're looking at yeah. the leaders and – that's the culture. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And if if it's a long lasting marriage, mm-hmm. yep, yep, yep. How good is that? That's the yep. culture. Yeah. If it's a fit person, yep. now, yep. For an eighty three year old, you're <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> if it's if it's a funny person who tells <laughs> funny jokes, <laughs> like uh, yeah. oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. not so good. So, Fun's so a culture. Laughter's a culture. I right? know. And and w- because we're able to send these people in there yeah. who are devoted to Jesus yeah. Christ, but uh, and spiritual people who are moving in the spirit, but not weird. Yes, yeah. yes. High praise and worship. Yeah. Hospitable, generous. All these areas of our culture are embodied mm-hmm. in people and and kind of injected into them, if Amazing. you like, Amazing. over that one week. Intense. Yeah, yeah. But let me tell you about one other yeah. real core memory I had, yeah. and it was so Ryan Smith. Uh, here from C3 SYD, he was a worship director. He came in and the session was on moving in the spirit. And it, this blew my mind and it changed the way I viewed moving in the spirit. He said he would play a chord progression and and, and he goes, okay, now here's a, an, an anointing for healing is going to come when I play this sound. Mm. And then he would play another one and it would be this, this will, you'll want to prophesy because of this sound. Yeah. And it was just, it was eye opening, it was mind blowing. And this about how to move in the spirit, how worship worked with it, and like that's culture, that's C three yeah, yeah. globally. Incredible. Yeah. It was stunning. Yeah, so, wow. so many of those things that you you know, okay, we love podcasts; they're awesome, right? <laughs> but but it's being in the room, experiencing totally. those yeah. things, yeah. totally phenomenal. Yeah. So, if people listening, Mark, wanted to sign up or send somebody along, and maybe they weren't even you know in a C three church, what do they do? Uh, first of all, talk to your lead pastor. Right, and mm-hmm. then he'll talk to the regional director. Yes, and then we'll do probably one in their region. So, right. and probably one coming up. What if they are a lead pastor? They talk can do it as well. <laughs> yeah, they go as well. Yeah. Well, we've had quite a few lead pastors come, right. and it's almost like a refresher. Totally, especially if you've been in ministry for maybe twenty years. Mm-hmm. Tell tell about the Eric Harrison story. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, look yeah, another. Sure. So Eric comes. Church has been stuck at two hundred for 15, 20 years. Yeah, brings his team. Yeah, right. same year I did it. Bought maybe right. fifteen or twenty of his team yeah. to the express. To express yeah. because he's like something's got to change. And then we're doing the whole day about leadership and yeah. how leaders multiply ministers. Yeah. Right. Mindsets change. Their church goes to five hundred in the next couple of years yeah. because of a immersive mindset change. Yes. Right. That the whole team got together. Right. Yeah. So that's a senior pastor and team. Just yeah. incredible. Right. And there are various combinations that, mm-hmm. that that can happen. I mean, the the Europe one this year, we had 
18 church planters, but we had about 30 next generation leaders. Amazing. Who were quite young. Yes. Like 18 to 24. Okay. Yes. Uh, and, the, and it was common. Then the afternoons we split to next generation content to ch- right. and church planting. Great. Content. Right. So right. it really, I mean, it, that sort of concept can apply in, in various contexts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could just take a team from a church yeah. Yeah. away if you wanted to yeah. shift them. And yes. Yeah. We haven't done that yet. Sure. But, Sure, maybe but it's. It, I, I think that's what's happening. Some people are going. I, I want to send my worship leader mm. because they they need to grow to take the team to the next level. Right. So it's an immersive experience to for for uh, department heads, for leaders, assistants, yeah. exec pastors. Yeah. But particularly for us, it's a bit. We're about church planting. Yes. That's, the, that's the pointy end of the spear. Sensational. What it's about. Yeah, it mm. is. It is. It is amazing. And and you know, uh, I guess just one final point on that whole express thing. Thinking of you, Mark. And some of the challenges you've faced, Mm -hmm. like I said, culture is in a person, not in a handbook. Mm -hmm. People, they mimic what they see. They they model after models. And and one of the great things that I totally admire about you is you're unstoppable, for goodness sake. Mm. I know you're not bulletproof, but it almost seems like it because (laughs) you've taken a few. Yeah. But – all of us have yeah. had oh, some sure. pretty serious pain in our lives, but <laughs> I've watched you over the last couple of years encounter physical challenges. Like we, you know, you don't need to talk about them, but yeah. they're life-threatening basically mm-hmm. and Bernadette. Yeah. And you guys are building the church and Jesus said, hey, you're going to be in a fight Yeah, exactly. if you're building this thing. So if students and young ministers can get a hold of that hardiness. Yeah. Right that endurance yeah. in the middle of battle because putting your hand up to say I'm going to plan a church, make sure God's called you. <laughs> and uh, and it isn't just a moment of excitement because uh, because you got to endure that toughness like a good soldier it, yeah, of it, Jesus. It's that remain thing in you, you know, that, right. that you know, John talks about in the Gospels. Yeah. You? That spirit. If if you remain in me, I, I think that you know, I joke about it. It's like, are right. you are you a Romanian? You know, like <laughs> I love that. <laughs> there it is. Have the you got stuff. that <laughs> that remain thing in you? Because then you'll you'll just keep walking. Yeah, through, you know? yeah, you will. And no no one's guaranteed a perfectly healthy life. Right. But if you've got a base of health, one of the things we talk about at Express is God's responsible for your healing, but you're responsible for your health. That's great. And what a so line. It's, a, it's a partnership. Right. You do all you can. Mm-hmm. Right. So that if you do encounter challenges, physical ones, yeah. then you've got the 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 platform to keep going so and the disciplines to keep go, walking through. Superb, yeah, love it. So, planning churches all around the world, this, which is an outcome from this. John, you have a you have a great saying where you know, like a movement with many houses. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's really good for people to, yeah. to understand this because there's obviously different models of church around the world. And so people have heard an expression, for example, we're a house with many rooms around the world. Mm. That's not us. Right. We we are a village of many houses around mm. the world. So we've got a lot of autonomous churches, a lot of uh, autonomous multi-site churches, you know, close to 600 churches globally. And each, so the unique thing about us is that C3 Global doesn't own all the property. We don't mm-hmm. pay all the staff. Mm-hmm. It's not one board and all these. We're, we're in this movement because we all like each other. That's actually the bottom line. <laughs> yes, like we, lo- yeah. we love the culture. We yeah. love what we're all about and yeah. we love doing the journey together. Right. So, so we respect autonomy of the local church and the local board, but at the same time we really encourage connection, accountability, oversight, coaching, yep. which is an opt-in sort of thing for right. people. But it's a, it's a beautiful culture and it takes the limit off – our ability to grow because, I mean, we're growing all the time. Churches have been planted all the time, right? Yeah, well, this coming year. Yeah, this current year, I think. I, oh, this, this year uh, up to 45 yes. churches will be planted. And I think of those at at this at this podcast recording, 35 of them have the leader, yep. have the place, yep. and have the funding yep. to just go ahead. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this number could actually get up to around about 60, but this is – a phenomenal movement for when we mentioned one million worshippers before. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a number to kind of keep us focused on that. And I know that you'll never get anything unless you actually put a vision out right. there and yep. you and you start. It actually changes how you are in the present. Mm-hmm. 
if you think, okay, that's us there. Yes. At present, we're around a little over 100,000 people, mm -hmm. but, but multiply that times 10, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what kind of people are we then and what kind of structure do we start forming up now? And this one, which is quite simple, really. Yes. To yes. keep it simple is, is a challenge. Yes. To keep red tape and bureaucracy uh -huh. and all mm -hmm. that out of it, to yep. keep it relational yes. and to keep it warm. Yep. And uh, not corporate. Yes. So that we are a family, so that we're a, a table. Yes. Where we eat together and laugh together right. and mm -hmm. do life together. Mm -hmm. yep. All of that, uh, that culture is so important for us to preserve. Yes. And so your, your statement, like a village of many houses, mm -hmm. that it just lends itself easily to yes. the idea of family. Yes, we're a global village. Mm. I, I love, and, and and even more so, I call it the gift of COVID. We don't like to refer to it, but the gift of COVID <laughs> is we can be way more connected globally right. than we ever could previously through Zooms, through connections. I know lots of, you know, lead pastors, young pastors are Zooming together, they're hanging out yeah. with no, uh, no real purpose apart from uh, iron sharpening iron. Right. And it's a great culture, but it's, it's not because we've structured it. It's just because people love each other and they we love to connect at conferences. We love to hang out together. So it's beautiful. It is interesting that to me mm -hmm. that there are some miracles that happen like that mm -hmm. that we've had nothing to do with. Yep. And so people say, how do you grow a movement? Well, half of it I got no idea. But we just really emphasise prayer yes. and the Bible. Yes. And I've, I've just stuck with those two mm -hmm. most simplistic things. If you read the Bible every day and – keep a level of the Word in you and you keep a level of the Holy Spirit in you, mm -hmm. the outcome, the fruit of that mm -hmm. is anybody's mm -hmm. guess. It's good. God works through that and you find yourself with what's happening all around the world today yep. and that we're all being part of this incredible privilege of working with God. I, I love it. I think one of the things I, I often think about, Pastor Phil, is because you've been so true to moving in the spirit. It's a it's part of who you are, and we've and you've fought for that for us as a movement to do it in a non weird way, but to allow the gift of the spirit. I'm going somewhere with this to allow mm -hmm. the, the gift of the spirit to flow in your life consistently. Mm -hmm. I, if I was to guess, I'd say a third of our churches globally are ones you've just prophesied in, <laughs> like literally at, at a at a conference or a church, and yeah. you've prophesied over somebody and they can see themselves doing that. Mm -hmm. So I was telling you earlier today, mm -hmm. we were at a conference in 2017, mm -hmm. and you were finishing a message and prophesying over us about a river flying from our church. We're on the Sunshine Coast, Queensland. Mm -hmm. And it said, there's a river coming up, and I can see it, and it's flowing south. There's lots of money in it. And that was the catalyst for us planning a location in Melbourne. Incredible. Which And everything you said in the prophecy is what's come to pass. Amazing. And would I have planned it or thought of it or done it without a prophetic prompt? Probably not. Isn't that amazing? And I reckon there's so many of our leaders and people around right. them. So when you go, oh, why do we prophesy or why do we do? Well, because it produces life oh, and growth. And totally. So many. That's why Richard Green doesn't come to any conferences anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to get a prophecy about <laughs> this next nation. And when uh, he hears his name being called by Pastor Phil, he's like, oh, no. <laughs> another nation and, and another hard nation. <laughs> we love you, Greeny. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is It is a, an astonishing astonishing reality that when you go through Scripture, pretty well every momentous event mm -hmm. that had nation-changing or even world-changing mm -hmm. impact began as a supernatural right. event, like the day of Pentecost right. is your biggest example. But mm -hmm. even the giving of the law mm -hmm. it was fire and clouds mm -hmm. and thunder and a yep. finger yep. riding in a rock, all of these things – we cannot deny that we have a, a God who wishes to demonstrate mm -hmm. supernatural power mm -hmm. in his church today. And we have got to fight for the miraculous and yeah. for healings and yeah. for these things. Not for them in their own sake, because they are signs mm. that point yep. to Christ yep. and to receiving him. But but here's the thing. If if we have an impotent church mm -hmm. and an impotent conversion experience, people will not hold together under, under the fight and under the difficulties of being a Christian. Mm -hmm. So I am convinced that we so need the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at a new level mm -hmm. to even, you know, one of the things he does is convince 
the world of sin. Yes. Well, if that was ever needed right, right. right now, yep. people are calling sin good. Yep. And they're saying, oh, no, that's that's a great thing. And what you guys have mm-hmm. is bad. Yep. So to be in such an upside-down world, mm-hmm. we have got to bring – because none of us can nail the heart yep. of a person. They're, yep. they're, in a, they're a slippery – the, every one of our hearts are slippery. Yes. So to, to grab it and to change it is something only the Holy Spirit can do. I love that. And we can have we we can have so called conversions where people are filling out cards because they walk forward on a, but are they transformed? Right. Right. Could they say nothing of the old has come into the new? I'm a brand new creation mm. in Christ Jesus. I've mm. been born again. This is so important. And so that is why in May next year yes. we are in Singapore. Let's go. Called and we have a conference, a global conference. A global called, conference. Be outpouring. Come on. And I believe that when you name a conference like that, you can anticipate that there will be an outpouring yes. that is going to affect all the nations. And it's going to be 60 nations where C3s are present right. yep. that will be represented yes. at this at this conference. So just urging everybody who's listening, if you could interested in coming, go to the C3 Church Global website. You'll find all the details on how to register, become part of that, and uh, look forward to seeing you. Hey, it's been fabulous talking with you, been Pastor great. John. Absolute joy. Reverend Mark. Oh, <laughs> Kelsey. God bless you, everybody. We look forward to talking with you next time.